Hello there! You're watching Chapter 3 of my Jedi Temple Guard series. We'll be looking at the equipment used by the Jedi Temple Guard, but for the most part, we'll be discussing their attire and offhand items. The next chapter will elaborate further on their lightsabers. In order to be prepared for any dangers that threaten those who inhabit the Jedi Temples spread across the galaxy, one must be sufficiently geared up for the task. The equipment of the Temple Guards listed in the Nexus of Power book is a good start, so let's begin there. According to the book, each Jedi Temple Guard is equipped with a Jedi Temple Guard lightsaber pike, Jedi Temple Guard robes, and keys. The Jedi Temple Guard robes are designed for both a ceremonial purpose as well as a defensive purpose. For the ceremonial purpose, the robes in combination with the mask display the Temple Guard's complete lack of emotional influence on their actions as they have attained inner peace through their experience and training. Due to the masterful craftsmanship of these robes, they are suitable for use within a variety of situations. These could be Jedi Trials, Court Hearings, Overseeing Riots, Transporting Prisoners, or Performing Lighting Ceremonies. The robes themselves are quite intricate. Thanks to the help of the Rebel Legion fan group, we're able to see the robes broken down thanks to the work of Rebel Legion members. From what we see here, there are several parts to the Temple Guard robes. Working from the innermost layers to the outermost layers, you can see they wear a long sleeve shirt, pants, their mask, a cassock, a form of hood that extends to their shoulders, tabards, a herringbone skirt that appears to be sewn onto the cassock, and of course their gauntlets, gloves, belt, and boots. Do all of these layers seem like a bit much? Perhaps, but it certainly looks great. But I believe these layers serve a practical purpose as well. While the Tumble Guard ropes are shown in the Nexus of Power book, the Force and Destiny source book, Keeping the Peace, displays the stats of just their robes. The Temple Guard robes grant the wearer 1 rank in Soga value and 2 ranks in defense. But you're probably wondering, how does cloth stop a lightsaber or a blaster bolt? Well, that brings us to the topic of Armor Weave. Armor Weave was a form of armored cloth that would dissipate heat from blaster bolts and provide a small bit of resistance to lightsaber attacks. Armor Weave was commonly used by bounty hunters, mercenaries, and military personnel. One notable person to use armor weave is Captain Phasma of the First Order. She wears an armor weave cape as a form of rank symbol. The bounty hunter Zam Wessel, seen in Attack of the Clones, is wearing a suit of Mabari armor weave. In order for the defensive nature of the Temple Guard robes to make sense, the only logical assumption is that the robes are made of armor weave. The Nexus of Power Book even says, Their armor appeared purely ceremonial, but with cutting layers of protective fabrics together to create a subtle but effective defense against bicycles and blades. This is a very strong hint that these do indeed incorporate armor weave. I'll now explain how armor weave dissipates blaster bolts and lightsaber energy. In order to answer this, we must understand how these weapons work. Many will mistake blaster bolts for being lasers and lightsabers as being made of actual light, or worse, call it a. I saw your laser sword. A laser sword. Laser sword. Laser sword. Laser swords. Laser sword. The laser sword. 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 Just, no. That's simply not the case. This is a very sophisticated weapon, let's treat it as such. Both blaster bolts and lightsabers utilize plasma contained within an electromagnetic force field. A blaster bolt's force field is incredibly weak as it was designed to dissipate upon meeting some resistance. Meanwhile, a lightsaber's plasma blade is a current of energy going back and forth from and into the lightsaber while also recycling that energy, making it very energy efficient. It is essentially a plasma chainsaw that behaves more like an omnidirectional blade. And, if you're unfamiliar with what plasma even is, I'll break it down even further for you. You can get any element, and depending on that element's temperature, it changes its form. For the sake of time and simplicity, I'll forego describing what sublimation is. If an element is cold, it becomes a solid. Heat it up, and it'll become a liquid. Heat it up even further, and it will become a gas. And, should you decide to superheat that gas, it becomes plasma. As such, plasma is extremely hot. In fact, stars are made of plasma. So when you're getting shot by a blaster bolt or slashed at by a lightsaber, you're getting hit with the heat of a star. Luckily, the surrounding air will supercool the plasma energy, turning it into a gas, thus preventing the plasma from igniting the atmosphere. However, lightsabers are a tad different from blaster bolts. The plasma energy of a lightsaber is constant and the electromagnetic force field surrounding the blade is reactive. Should one lightly graze an opponent with a lightsaber, it'll release a small amount of energy. 
but if one were to apply a lot of power behind a blow, it'll exert a lot more energy. Many will make their wrongful assumption that a lightsaber will instantly cut through anything. Or, if you were to drop it on the floor, it would burn through the floor and fall forever. This is not true. In Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Jedi Master Yoda throws a lightsaber into the chest of a clone trooper, yet the lightsaber seems to be stuck in place. This right here perfectly displays the properties of a lightsaber. When Yoda threw his lightsaber, it gained kinetic energy through its momentum. When the lightsaber met resistance in the form of a 501st clone trooper, it exerted energy, causing the lightsaber to pierce the clone. Why it stays in place instead of flying through the clone is because the kinetic energy gained earlier was used up as well as having the hilt stop the lightsaber on the clone's armor. Because it was no longer meeting any resistance, it stopped exerting energy, causing it to be stuck in place. Once Yoda pulls out the lightsaber, you see some sparks as he does so. The lightsaber is once again meeting resistance to the surrounding tissue of the clone trooper as it is being pulled out. So now that we understand how blaster bolts and lightsabers work, let's get back to the topic of armor weave. The exact details of armor weave construction are a bit unknown, but I believe it's safe to assume that the cloth is lined with a superconductive material, most likely a form of metal. Since the plasma from a blaster bolt will almost instantly cool the moment it makes contact with the air, the conductive nature of the armor weave would evenly distribute the remaining heat energy of the blaster bolt into the cloth. This would reduce the damage caused by the bolt or negate the damage entirely. As for the use of armor weave against lightsabers, it's not as strong since the amount of energy exerted by the lightsaber can vary and will most definitely be stronger than a blaster bolt. Since the lightsaber uses a current of plasma and not plasma isolated within a force field, the energy is more constant and the lightsaber is far more likely to do serious damage to armor weave. But armor weave would help if the person wearing it just received a glancing blow as the conductive nature of the weave would help mitigate the damage. As mentioned earlier, I stated that I believe the numerous layers of the Temple Guard robes served a practical purpose. If all of these layers were to be made of armor weave, this would mean the Temple Guards would have a solid defense against blaster bolts as the inner layers would dissipate the heat further, as well as lessen the blows of lightsaber strikes. This is very similar to Gambeson armor which has been used during medieval times. Gambeson armor was a common form of armor used in medieval times as it was made of layers upon layers of linen cloth. It worked surprisingly well as it could absorb blunt trauma and a sword slash might not cut through all the layers. With the Jedi Temple Guard robes being built with layers of armor weave, the robes act as an advanced form of Gambeson armor. A blaster bolt or a lightsaber strike might not always successfully penetrate all of those layers. Since we've established the physical properties of the Temple Guard robes, let's move on to the mask of the Temple Guard. It is currently unknown what material the mask is made of, but plasteel or plastoid would be a safe assumption as both materials have been used for military armor. The Force and Destiny sourcebook, Keeping the Peace, describes it as an armored mask, so it does indeed serve defensive functions. The Temple Guard's mask also housed a built-in comlink and an in-helmet scanner. The comlink would allow the Temple Guards to communicate with one another, with the Jedi Temple Security Force, or with other Jedi. Though we don't know the exact properties of what kind of scanner was inside a helmet, we can only speculate. Perhaps it would allow them to zoom in like you would with a pair of macro binoculars. Or maybe it will detect heat signatures, hazardous materials, or detect metals such as concealed weapons. We can only guess. In order to help maintain the anonymity of the Temple Guard, the mask was equipped with a voice modulator to obfuscate the wearer's voice with a form of warble effect. I wondered when you would return. However, this effect can likely be turned off as when a Temple Guards shouted Cease hostility! in the Clone Wars TV series, their voice was clear. Aside from the robes and mask, the Temple Guards are seen carrying around keys. The purpose of these should be fairly obvious, for closing off and gaining access to various parts of the Jedi Temple. While we don't know which key goes to which lock, we can assume these were for rooms such as the Armory, Holocron Vault, the Council Chambers, or other rooms which require stronger security. This concludes a chapter on Jedi Temple Guard equipment. Please join me for the next chapter where we'll be learning about the weapons of the Jedi Temple Guard. Goodbye, and may the Force be with you.